Hi guys and girls, how are you doing? Mick here again from Tide for Trout. Today I'm going to be showing you how to tie a straggle blob. The one I'm going to be doing today is what I call the cheese and sweet corn straggle blob. Now this technique isn't my invention. I actually saw Gareth Wilson on UK Fly Fisher making some of his lures and this was like how he did the, the body for the lures. Um, and I just thought that would make a good blob. So that's what I decided to do. And to be honest, I'm catching lots of fish on them. So anyway, without further ado, we'll get on with the tie-in. So I've got a size 10 blob hook from Blob and Buzzer, which in my opinion is the best blob hook you can get in black nickel. And I've got a 3.8 millimeter uh, brass chartreuse bead on. And I'm gonna be using the Fluoro White UTC in 140 denier thread. So we'll start off coming in behind the bead. Just catch that in. And then cut off your excess. And then I come down the hook to just a little way around the bend. And then I bring it all the way back up again. All the way back to the top and then back down just a little bit. Right, now what I use is, this is Vegas Struggle, also from Blood and Buzzer. This is the sweet corn, that's what they call it, which is hence why it's called a cheese and sweet corn. What we do is we just catch that in, just a pinch loop, catch it in, a couple of turns on, that's now secured. And I've got some fluo cheese uh, agate from Celtic Blob Company, the cheese part of the sweet corn, in, the cheese and sweet corn, sorry. What we do is we strip the core, put a little bit of the fluff off, just so you've got something to catch in, doesn't make it too bulky. I just lie that over the top and then I catch that in. Do a couple of turns and then I pull the core back over itself and put a turn over it, that kind of locks it in place. Then what I do is just basically tie that back down to where you tied your thread down the shank and then come back up again. Then what I do is I put two of the finishes on there, just to keep that, that, keep that secure. And then I put the thread over to one side. Now, this can be a little bit tricky, but as long as you keep, I try to keep the struggle towards the bead and the agate, obviously away from that. And when you come around with your first turn, just make sure it stays that way around. And from there you just pull everything back and start tying. You'll notice I pull everything back and then I hold with that hand and then make sure everything's lined up for the next turn with the other hand. You just keep teasing the fibers back to make sure that they are actually coming through and just keep going. And it's just basically work your way back up to the bead. You just keep teasing the fibers back. Like I say, take your time with it. It can be a little fiddle. It's actually easier when you use a slightly longer piece. I'm just using some because I only need to make the one. So it's just the way I do it. So I come all the way at the top. And once you're at the top, I then go around one more time, but only with the agate. I don't like having the straggle sticking out the front towards the bead. Then we take our thread and you come behind the agate and the straggle and then do two in front. Come around again one more time behind and do two in front. And then what you do is I take a sharp knife and I just trim, get a hold of your agate and your struggle with the tag ends. Pull them taut and just use a sharp knife and just pluck that out. And that's that done. If you've got any stragglers there, we'll sort them out in a minute. So then what I do is I take a little bit of varnish. And put a little bit of varnish on the thread like that. Back down there, and then I do a 
whip finish around the bead usually around about four or five cinch that down I also tuck it in a little bit with my nail and then cut off the thread now these little extra straggly bits as you can see on this side I'm not that keen on so if you just get a hold of just the straggle and pull tight and just run your knife on it it'll start it's not so sharp knife this one it'll start to pop off and it doesn't cut the eggs to see as long as you're just holding the bits of struggle blob so that's basically it now that's the, the fly tied what you do then is if you take a where have I hidden it excuse me a dubbing brush this is a proper bought dubbing brush or you can just get a bit of the hook part of velcro and stick it on a lollipop stick which is what I used to have both of them work perfectly well but I'll use the one I've paid for because I don't want to waste my money so yes, all you do is you just pull that forward, just lightly, you don't need to go crazy with it. Just basically fluffing it up, you can get the hooks in and sort of wiggle it around and pull them out a bit. Just want to fluff it up and then I go around sideways and around the other way, make sure you get under the point of the hook. And then basically what you're left with is the struggle blob. It's basically a cheese blob but with the struggle added and it just seems to give it just a little bit extra and I can hand on heart say I've never ever not caught one using it. I'm not seeing it guarantees the catch but every time I've used it I've literally caught a fish with it at least once. So and that's been brownies or rainbows. Um, so yeah I highly recommend you give it a shot if you're not into tying them. I do obviously sell them. I do them in the cheese and sweet corn. I do a cheese and apple which is the green struggle. I do a pink, it's like a white ecstasy with a hot pink straggle and I do an olive with the green straggle and uh, they all catch fish, they're all just really really good, they look great wet as well um, so yeah, give them a try, give them a tie and uh, I'll catch you on the next one please don't forget to like and subscribe, any comments below are much appreciated and uh, I'll catch you on the next video thanks for watching, see you later Bye.